Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I want to talk a little about giving the gift of Bible journaling. Christmas is coming, or if you're watching this at another time, then Easter might be on the way, and sharing your passion for Bible journaling might be a great gift to give to someone. The Inspire Bible is usually a really good place to start, especially for people who aren't artistic, don't consider themselves artistic, but they'd like to color something in, because these Bibles have art down the sides and they have just scriptures written out and pictures going with them so you can just color them in study the scriptures on the page beforehand so you have something to meditate on while you do the coloring you can do crazy backgrounds and all sorts of bible journaling techniques or you can just stay simple and color in the images that are provided the one i'm flipping through right now is the regular version of the inspire bible it has a bunch of different col colors of covers available some with flowers some plain colors this one is the large print version of the same Bible, the Inspire Bible, and thank you to the publisher for sending it to me so I could share it with you. A lot of people have asked if there is a large print version, and there is. Links in the doobly-doo to all the things mentioned in this video. But the pictures are blown up as well as the words on the page blown up, so it's not as though everything's rerun, like the text is not re flowed to make it, make it fit for this. It's just basically blowing up the entire thing. And what I'm going to do is compare a particular spread and then I'm going to color this picture in the large print version, but I'm going to compare it to the one in the regular print version. And you can see how much easier it's going to be to do that lettering in the large print version rather than the small. And there's also a significant difference in the text size. So for those whose eyes are aging like mine, you may find the large print version to be easier. The pagination is also the same, so the way that that could be helpful if you want to get one version for you and one version for someone who is a person you'd like to gift from a distance, say your grandmother or your grandchild, you want to get them a comparable version, study the scriptures together, talk about it, email about it, Facebook about it, and share your artwork that you do from each one of the scriptures. It's a way that you can say on page uh, 372 is this picture that I'm working on and here's what the scripture says and this is what God told me about it. So you can study along with someone else by just using the same page numbers. I recommend getting some watercolor pencils or I'm using ink tense pencils to go along with the Bible gift because that's going to help them get started. And the reason I almost recommend watercolor pencils or ink tense pencils over regular ones is that they can be used as regular pencils. So I could just color them as I'm doing right here and leave the pencil as it is. I don't have to actually do any of the watercoloring, but you have the option when you have a watercolor pencil. There's a set of 12 ink tense pencils that has a really good set of basic colors that would help somebody new at this totally get started and be happy with that color selection. And on my blog is a little swatch card of the colors that are available in that set of 12. If you want to see kind of what those colors are. So I'm just scribbling the color in here and filling it in in sort of general ways. I'm not being real careful with it. I'm not worried about making everything blendy blendy. Putting a few colors in more concentration in some darker areas, but really I'm just layering different colors over so it can feel almost like a fall harvest time scene. I could take a brush, a wet brush, and kind of wash over all that to blend it. But what I want to show you is a different way to do it that won't add as much water to the page, which means it won't get as wrinkly crinkly, which is using a baby wipe. I've wrapped it around my finger so that I can kind of push that color using my finger right along with the baby wipe. And while it has the green on it, I'm going to do all the darker green parts and just smush the pencil around. Look how quickly that covers a large area. And then I'll change it up if I'm going to switch to an area that has more yellow in it, like the tops of all of the field has more yellow, and I can just smoosh across it really easily. This will not only not be as wrinkly, it'll also dry quicker, so you can go back in and do some more work. There's some scrolly things in the corner that I'm going to go in with an orange pencil and work on. And it, it just gives you some different options to use the baby wipe instead of the brush. But you can also give the person a brush to go along with their set of pencils. Here, with each of the words that are in this, I'm going to do a two-tone coloring. So I'm going to put one color on the top, one color on the bottom, 
and fill that in with the pencil. It doesn't even have to be perfect with the pencil because when I move that pigment around with a brush, it's going to blend them nicely. And you can see how nicely these silver brushes point. This is a number six, and I think if you're just looking to get one brush to go with some Bible journaling, a number six would be a good size, especially for this large print version. You might want to go a little smaller if you're going to do the small print version or the regular print, but I have done it with a number six. You just have to be a little more careful. These brushes point so well, they get such a nice fine point on them that you can do a lot of fine detail with them. After all of this was dry, I was able to go back in and do another layer of color to intensify color in certain areas. You certainly don't have to do that, but you just wait until it's completely dry and then you can do another layer over top. And so I'm just going to add some dark colors in some of the deepest shadow areas to increase the contrast in my picture. And I'm just kind of scribbling in between some of them. I'm using the shadows that the artist already put into the picture to follow along and throw some color in. Just kind of scribbling it and being real, real loose with it. And then when I take my brush to it, I can just move it around. And I'm always careful when I do my Bible journaling not to use a super wet brush. It's kind of more of a damp brush. Wipe the brush off on your fingers or on a paper towel or something so that you're not putting a ton of moisture down but you do end up with a little bit of wrinkly crinkliness sometimes, even with these careful techniques. But if you wanna flatten it out a little bit more, just put a sheet of computer paper above and below. And I'm gonna apologize for my crazy camera focusing. I didn't realize it was gonna do this weird focusing thing, but just iron over top of it. You can see how quickly I'm ironing. It's set on its highest setting. Pull my papers out and it's done. I know it's out of focus, but it is much flatter than it was. If you're using anything with acrylic or with a metallic in it, then don't do this technique because the heat will melt them and then it'll stick to your paper. Now, I often get asked what's my favorite Bible because the Inspired Bible is not my favorite because I'm an artist and I like to create my own things. So I'm going to show you my very favorite Bible. It's an expensive one, so if you have somebody who really is going to put their heart and soul into it, this is an excellent option. It's got this beautiful leather cover on the front. And this is in a translate. This one particular one is in a translation that I love, and I would recommend that you focus on what translation you want to read the scriptures in, not only whether or not they have the right kind of other elements in it. But this one is my my study Bible. It's the translation that I love the best and love to work with the most. And now that I've perfected, I shouldn't say perfected. I've done a lot of learning about my techniques in my other Bibles. I also have those other Bibles to use as testing, to try a different medium, try different colors and different applications, as well as I have those translations now to study. And I can see how one version translates a verse compared to another. So it's a great library of resources, as well as lots of places to practice things. And in this Bible, this is just the one that I'm going to be using more ongoing, more long-term for myself because I love this leather cover on it so much. Now, one of the other Bibles that I like a lot, and if you know somebody you're gonna give this to who's really an artist and they really have some skills, then the, in, uh, the Interleave Bible is a good one to go with because this has a blank page in between every page of scriptures. So you have lots of room to do your artwork without interfering with, but you can also interfere with, the text so you can interact with it or not interact with it. You can just do one page or you can do the full spread. Now I would recommend if you're going to gift a Bible to someone and get them started in Bible journaling that you do a page or two in their Bible maybe on your favorite verses so that when they get it they have some sort of an idea where to begin. So on this one, this is watercolor pencils, I might do that on my favorite verse to share with them what the possibilities are for when they start creating. So here's a couple more Bible journaling videos if you're interested in those. There is a link in the doobly-doo to my Bible journaling class online. It's an inexpensive walkthrough of mediums and how they work and what bleeds through and what doesn't and how I went through my testing process. So you can do the same as you embark on your Bible journaling adventure, okay? I will see you guys later. Take care and have an awesome day.